What's up YouTube, it's me Chris. This is my second attempt at blogging. It's been about a week since I did it last time and I thought I should probably update. I have been told that it's actually called vlogging from my best friend Ellery. And yeah, I have some things to talk about but I also have some more questions ready as well. First of all, I don't know what your opinions are on birds. I guess they're okay but there are some birds that I really don't like. Like rainbow lorikeets, they tend to shit on you when they fly over you. It's happened to me a few times, but they're not really what I was going to talk about. I have this problem where my mum and dad have split up, but they live really close together, so I can easily walk back and forth because I swap over monthly, and if I forget to bring anything from one house to the other, I can just walk. But the easiest way to get there, I think there's a magpie nest now. And magpies, they're kind of docile, usually. But around this time, like winter coming spring, they tend to swoop anyone that gets near their nest. Well, not anyone. It doesn't really happen to most people. Mostly just me, I think, because I'm taller than most people. That's what I've been told anyway. So it's a bit weird but I've been forced to wear a helmet and bring this bag of rocks with me whenever I walk now so that when the little bastards swoop I can throw stuff at them. I tried it once. I didn't have the bag of rocks before. I was walking. It was the first time it swooped and I kind of panicked but I found gravel and you have to walk away because this magpie, it'll swoop you from one telegraph pole stand on the other wire and it'll just stare at you and it'll wait for you to either start running or move away and then it will swoop you again and then land on the next telegraph pole but I managed to pick up gravel and then throw it at it and then it flew across the road onto the other side onto another telegraph pole so I just picked up more gravel and I threw it at it and then it flew away and since then it hasn't actually suited me again. My mum told me that magpies have a really good memory with people and that apparently it would just make it worse and it would just attack again in a swarm next time it saw me. So I've been, I've been going, whenever I go back and forth down that street, I have been wearing a helmet and bringing this bag of rocks with me. So hopefully if it does swoop again, I might be able to kill it. <laughs> I've since lost my helmet though and I don't know where it is and it's not the best way of dealing with this problem since people who are going by that street, it's not a very busy street but when they look at you and you're walking on the street with a helmet on, kind of think you have a problem. <laughs> okay, so yeah, that's my talk about birds. I mean, if any of you knew anything about magpies and could help, you could leave a comment. And if you hear a loud whirring noise, that's just my computer. I don't know what I did to it. And if it does break down, I'm not going to be able to get another one. So hopefully it's not badly damaged. That brings me to the next thing I wanted to talk about. That I have no money. Which is kind of sucky. I just damaged the computer cord. But... Thankfully, Dad paid for that. And my phone was damaged too, because I jumped into the pool with it. This was my phone. It's not too flash compared to what most people have, but it was a good phone. It was a flat touch screen, and because I need a working phone in order to get a job, I've been forced to switch the SIM card from this into this which is not really funny at all it's a terrible phone it works though which is what I need it to so yeah I finished my TAFE course but apparently at the aged care homes which I'm going to be applying to they have waiting periods for when they hire people so I'm still waiting for that. Since then I've applied for Maccas. And I'm really hoping they won't call me back.
probably shouldn't have applied there since I don't really want to work there, but they probably won't call me back. If they do, then I'll be forced to go in there, but the lady said something about there was a way to apply online, so maybe since I only handed my resume in, they won't call me. I was going to try some other places, but I've tried about all of them, and none of them have said... None of them have said that, you know, they were looking for work, and a few of them said that they'd call me back, but, you know, they don't. So anyway, the questions... Since I've told you basically everything important that's happening lately, I don't have any money, so nothing's happening. I think that all of my problems would be solved if I just had more money. Even this chair is broken. I can only sit on it being still. Okay, so, um... These questions are a bit different than the other ones. They're concerned with growing up. And I may not answer all of them. When and where were you born? I was born on the 23rd of October, 1994, in New Zealand. Same as Ellery, which is probably why we get along so well. Where did you grow up? Well, I moved over to Australia when I was three. So I've been basically... Yeah, I've been around the central coast when I was really young. Um... What was it like? If you don't live around here, I don't really care about you. Who were your parents? Lynette and Ronald. What were your parents like? Um, they're cool. How was your relationship with your parents? Cool. Did you get into trouble? What was the worst thing you did? Worst thing I did, I stole ten dollars once from mum, and she never found out. Well, no, I didn't steal it from mum. I stole it from the coin jar, and then I ended up feeling bad, and I paid back more than I stole. So yeah, <laughs> that's not really something to brag about. <laughs> um, did you get into trouble for it? No, because I ended up paying it all back. And this was when I was really young, too. Do you have any siblings? What were they like growing up? Well, I have Blake. He's cool. <laughs> what did you look like? The same, but younger. How would you describe yourself as a child? Were you happy? I was actually a really happy and nice child, which conflicts to the skeptical person I feel I am now. What is your best memory of childhood? Worst. Well, my best memory of childhood was when I went to my aunt's farm, which I told you about, probably. My worst memory of my childhood was probably when I watched a show, which was probably for older kids and not for me, about werewolves, and that's how my childhood fear began. I had nightmares for two weeks after seeing that. Did you have a nickname? How'd you get it? No. Oh, yeah, I'm not telling you that. <laughs> Who are your best friends? What were they like? Ellery's been my friend since year 10. And I've been friends with Rebecca and Rachel for a long time as well. And those are the friends that I've been with for the longest amount of time. How would you describe a perfect day when you were young? I'm pretty sure the same way anyone else would. What did you think your life would be like when you were older? I already told you I had no expectations. <laughs> Last question. Do you have any favorite stories from your childhood? One of my many trips to hospital when I was a child could be something to talk about, which you've already heard parts of, because every year of middle school, something happened which forced me to go to hospital. <laughs> in year seven, it was the pencil in the leg that my brother threw that I turned and pushed in and went four inches into my leg and the bit of it was sticking out no one believed me when I told them the whole pencil was in my leg they thought I was being melodramatic it was just the end of it and so they gave me anesthetic but it wasn't enough because I kept pulling and it kept coming out and so it did end up hurting a little bit and then the next year after that I was well we, it was sport 
And for some reason, everyone in the class was made to run backwards over concrete. Which doesn't sound like a very good idea. Anyway, I was running, trying to beat everyone else. And I fell over and I sprained my wrist. And, well no, I didn't sprain it. I fractured my wrist. And I had to go to hospital for that. Because we didn't know if it was fractured or broken at the time. And then next year was the hockey stick in the eye incident. Okay, yeah, my computer is getting really loud now, so I should probably shut it off for the night. Oh, this was a lot longer than my first video. So, see you until next time that I think of anything to blog about or find more questions. Sorry, vlog. Bye.